despite the fact we all want to take full advantage of the youth of our senior years, the reality is every year it gets harder and harder for Americans to retire at or before 65. There's an annual survey that's conducted by a research firm called Gallup, and they just released their, their latest survey numbers. And it shows that the average American now is expecting to retire at 66. You know what that was 30 years ago? The average American was expecting to retire at 60, six years earlier. And, and these are really important years. These are our healthiest, most active years. People have heard me say this before. If you're 60 years old, unfortunately, we only have a thousand weeks remaining, likely or less, of healthy, active time. So it's important that, that we're deliberate and we're thoughtful about when we retire. But unfortunately, there's external forces that are making that harder and harder to do every year. And today's video is to help us overcome that, right? Today's video is to talk about what are the things you should be doing to prepare for retirement if you want to retire in four different age categories, under 50, 50 to 55, 56 to 60, or 61 to 65. Uh, and then at the end, I'm going to share with you some things that relate to everybody. And I want to make sure that you see it because it's critical. So let's start with under 50. And the first thing I'd say for people under 50 is, you know, that's awfully young. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I will share, I live in a ski town. Uh, and it's a town where people that have had liquidity events, maybe they've built a company, uh, or for some, they got a big inheritance, whatever it is, um, they have financial freedom early in their lives, oftentimes in their late 30s or 40s. And that early freedom is great, but many, many, I, well over half of my friends that were in that situation said, you know what, I want to get back into the game. So if you're, if you're under 50 and you're feeling, you know what, I want, to, I want to retire. I want to retire at 45, 47, 48. Uh, something to think about is, is there a way to do both? Is there a way to get the freedom that you're looking for and, and still have a job that you love? And if you're saying, hey, Asul, yeah, I'd love my freedom, but the reality is I don't have a job I love. Okay, let's work on that. You know, what could you do? Are you at the right company? Do you have the right boss? Um, do you have the right skill sets? Did you, did you develop an expertise in an area that you later found out, hey, this isn't what I wanna do? Maybe instead of retiring completely, you reskill, you reboot, you retool, and you get those new skills, whether that's a big change or a little change. So again, under 50 is, is awfully young, but if you want to do that, I would say the first thing you have to have, you have to have, you know, if you live in the U.S., you have to have a plan uh, for health care. And, and this is going to be, so health care is going to be a common theme for anybody that retires before they're Medicare eligible, right? But here's the framework that we're going to use on this. It's, it's really five levers. And that is, you know, how much are we spending? How much do we have saved to support our investment? What's our risk profile? You know, what kind of re and risk is going to ultimately determine the type of returns we can plan to get. It looks like maybe the ferry might be coming in here. The, the tide's coming in awfully quickly here. Um, so again, spending, the amount saved, what our risk profile is, uh, and then do we have any income sources coming in? You know, if, you, if you've spent your adult life buying rental properties and fixing them up and you know making them better for the people that are living in those apartments and and you've paid down the mortgages and you have nice rent coming in that's a very different situation than if you're living off of your investment accounts and both have its pros and cons but that's kind of the framework and then the number five is just are you mentally ready for retirement you know our, our jobs take up so much of our time are you mentally ready for retirement? Do you know what you're gonna do at that time? Do you know what your new purpose is and what your new passion is? So we talked about 50 to 55. Now let's, uh, I'm sorry, under 50. Um, and we talked about, can you do both? And some I other ideas on that just briefly. Could you do a sabbatical at your current job and try out something? If you think 
you want to be a world traveler. Could you get a month off of work? Could you get two months off of work? Could you get a sabbatical? Could you go to your boss and say, I need to reboot, you know, I'm feeling a little burnt out. I need some time off, as opposed to taking the leap and actually trying that life. You know, I, I have worked remotely uh, for two months at a time. And there's parts of that that I loved. I did it in Southeast Asia. I did it in South America. I did it in, in Mexico. I did it in Europe. Uh, I was very fortunate. And there were parts of that experience that I loved, but there's also negatives with that experience. So get the pros and the cons. Okay, so that's under 50. Now 50 to 55. You know, let's look at those levers again. Spending. What is your spending like? Savings. How much savings do you have? Uh, income. What are your income sources? And risk, again, risk is really going to, there's a huge difference between getting a 5% a return on your money over, you know, even if you're 50 to 55, um, you still have well over 30 years that you need to plan on. So there's a big difference between getting 5% on that money and getting 8%. So what your risk tolerance is, is really important because that's gonna determine your asset allocation. And unfortunately, it takes time to, you can't just say, you know, well, I feel like I, sh I you know, my nature is 50-50, 50, 50, 5, 0, 5 0, right? Half stocks, half bonds. It's not as easy as just saying, um, you know, my financial advisor says I should be 80% in the stock market. That's a dangerous game plan for most people because when you need to have the fortitude the most, is when the chips are down and it's gonna be expensive if you end up changing your asset allocation. So it tends to be a learned behavior over a period of time. It's not something um, that you can do in a couple months, in my experience, right? You have to live through that. You have to see how you react. You and your advisor are a team. Your advisor's a river guide, but are you gonna take your advisor's advice when it, when it matters the most? Some people can, some people cannot, right? So better to get a 5% return over the next 30 years than to shoot for 80, uh, to shoot for 8% and blow out at the bottom because you're really gonna hurt yourself that way. And oftentimes people get stuck out of the market. They blow out and they're waiting for the next shoe to drop, you know, the next leg down um, and it never comes. And they can be out of the market for two, three, five years, a decade and that can have a substantial impact on you. So those are, those are the levers. And then the, the go, no go switch, the traffic light, if you will, is really the Monte Carlo simulation. So you do all this planning, looks like the tide is coming in. I, I better get out of here while I still can. Uh, okay, so the go, no go switch on all of this is um, your Monte Carlo simulation. And you know, if your Monte Carlo simulation says you have more than a 90% chance of succeeding, that's great, that's, that's pretty good. You know, there's a lot of people that would like it even higher, but 90 plus percent, that's, you're doing really well. Um, but what if it comes in at 80%? What if it comes in at 65%? Do you still go? You know, and again, maybe it's not all or nothing. Maybe what you do is you have a backup plan. You know, if you're 50 to 55, you know, if it works, and a lot of this has to do with sequence of return risk. What are the returns in the first five years after, after you quit working, right? Um, and if, if you get fortunate and the market does really, really well in those fifth, first five years, you know, you're through part of the danger zone at least, right? But what if you get unlucky and the market ha has a bad spell right after you retire and that happens right that happened to people that retired in 2007 that happened to people uh, that retired at the beginning of 2020 when COVID happened if they got scared and blew out of the market after the market was experienced its fastest 30 percent drop if they did that um, they they got hurt right so what is your backup plan Let's say you're, you're likely, your Monte Carlo simulation is 65%. What's your backup plan? You probably are still young enough that you can still get another good job, right? So if you're willing for that to be your backup plan, you, can, you don't necessarily need 97% likelihood. I can't tell you what likelihood 
you should be comfortable with, right? You need to work with a financial advisor that knows your personality, knows your emotions and how you react to things over time, you'll do that, uh, and knows your specific situation. This, none of this is financial advice. These are just things for you to think about and really encouragement to work with a professional to get clarity on these important items. Okay, now, what if you're 56 to 60? Okay, same factors come into play, right? What's your spending gonna be? How much have you got saved? What kind of asset allocation? What kind of realistic returns can you expect to get from that asset allocation? Um, and let's see, what else, what was the, the other one? Income, do you have any outside sources of income? So those are the four main levers. And then mentally, are you ready? You know, have you done the reflective work? Who are you outside of work? What are your passions outside of work? You're gonna have a lot of time. 24 hours in the day is a lot, a lot of time. How do you want to spend that time? How do you want to give back to society? What's going to make you get up in the morning and be excited, right? Um, and then, again, the go, no, go switch for, you know, your 56 to 60. Do you retire? What does the Monte Carlo simulation say? What does your financial advisor say? And what if you don't have a high enough level of certainty? What is your safety net if you say, you know what, even though it's not as high as I want it to be, I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm still gonna pull the trigger, I'm still gonna go. Don't do that unless you know what your backup plan, what your safety thing is. So 56 to 60, you know, I wish it was different, but candidly, ageism, unfortunately, is alive and well in the United States, um, and it can be really hard to get another job. So, so maybe, you know, you're still young enough that you can do some seasonal work, um, like working at national parks or, seasonal work like uh, at a ski resort or at a summer resort or uh, during the crunch time during the holidays for retailers or online firms you're still young enough if your health is good enough you might be able to do that so maybe that's your your game plan and then 60 to 65 you know everything else the same again what the monte carlo the go no go switch what's your backup on that maybe your safety net on that is um, maybe it's a side hustle, right? Maybe it's you've got this skill set, you know, working at an Amazon fulfillment center uh, for three months during the busy holiday period. That might not be something that you're overly excited about doing. Might be a lot harder as you're getting older. So maybe your backup plan is a side hustle. All right, I've got a train coming here, so I need to wrap up. I don't want this video, I don't want your decision to be a train wreck. Oh, the train's coming the other way, I think. Um, but anyways, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, the best thing you can do to support my station is to watch another video. I encourage you to watch this video here, which is average retiree income. And this video down here, which is five reasons to retire as soon as you can. And here comes the train just in time for all of us. Thanks for watching.